goes awry. It's only 13 to nothing. And look at the Ford game summary. Colin Klein, we were worried about his health coming in. He's played pretty well overall. TCU can't get their offense really moving. Kansas State's defense doing their usual stellar job of limiting people. And look at that. Combined 67 total yards in the second quarter. Both defenses having a huge effect on this game. TCU deferred at the beginning of the game, so they will receive the football to start the second half. Colin Klein gets loose on the Kansas State sideline. Brandon Carter ready to return, and Trevon Boykin, after suffering a shoulder injury in the first half, he came back, and he's looking forward to getting out there now. And this one out of the end zone. And they'll get it at the 25. Let's go downstairs to Julie Alexandria. Hey, guys, I just spoke to Coach Patterson to see what he was going to have to do so they could get up on the board here in the second half. He said, we're going to have to convert on third downs. We've got to limit the turnovers. And he said they have control of the ball first, so they got to make something happen. Also, another thing, guys, a factor major here, the wind has died down considerably. Hopefully that will help. Back to you. All right, Julie, first down at 10 at the 25 for TCU. <laughs> and a kid ran out on the field, folks. <laughs> He's supposed to, you know what he is? He's the kid who's supposed to get the kicking tee, and he got out there, and the view was so good on the field that he didn't want to leave. So they had to go get him and the tee to get the second half started. I, I think he wanted to play. <laughs> Here's Boykin side-arming it to Fuller, and Fuller will pick up close to eight yards. And Julie's report about what Gary Patterson needs from his team. He's about converting on third down. I've got to add to that. Not that Gary needs my help coaching his team, obviously, but I think they've got to find a way to push the ball downfield a little bit more in the throwing game. And Julie's last note about the wind dying down gives them a better opportunity to do that because the way Kansas State is snugging up the receivers, they've got to push them back a little bit and make them think they can throw it deeper. And Tucker picks up the first down. But you know, we talk a lot about Bill Snyder and what he's done at Kansas State, but I tell you what, Gary Patterson, 52 years old, in his 12th season here at TCU, is one of the great coaches in America. He's led the Horn Frogs to five conference championships, four in the Mountain West, and one in Conference USA, seven bowl wins, including the 2010 Rose Bowl, a 21-19 win over Wisconsin. TCU finished that year 13-0 and number two in the final AP poll. But this is a terrific football coach. First down and 10 at the 42. Here's the option. Tucker. And he'll pick up three. And in trying to move the ball against Kansas State, I'm going to, I'm going to go with a basketball analogy. When a team puts pressure on you and you have a team that can, can compress you a little bit, Kansas State seems like a half-court defense. But what they do is they make it difficult for you to get the ball across the 50. All right, so let's say that's half court in basketball. And then you get it across there, you take a sigh of relief, and then you're like, hold it, I still have to run my offense in the half court. They make it difficult on you on numerous occasions to try and get the ball downfield. Tough to move it. Second down and seven, Boykin. He's been very successful with that pass there, although Josh Boyce dropped it. And that'll bring up third down and seven. They're one of seven on third down conversions this evening. And that goes right back to when your quarterback is struggling, then everyone else has to find a way to pick him up. Wasn't the, the best thrown pass, we know that. But you're going to need to help out your quarterback a little, make some of the more difficult catches in order to try and keep the ball moving downfield. Third down, seven at the 45. Boykin hands it off. Wow. Coming through like a bullet, Meshack Williams, Arthur Brown there as well. And how about Meshack Williams? He ends up having both players wrapped up. Okay, so this is Williams working against Fabaluge. Look at that. He had both of them. I mean, if you can't put two tackles in the stat sheet, <laughs> you've got to put two check marks in his grade sheet when they watch the film on Sunday. Horn Frog send it away, Tremaine Thompson. We'll start inside the 15. Thompson weaving his way up. Thompson finally knocked out of bounds at the 42. A 44-yard punt and a 27-yard return. 
but the TCU defense has kept the Horn Frogs in this game. They've been all over Colin Klein. Let's see if they can continue right after this. This kid, Tremaine Thompson, has been wonderful on special teams. The Wildcats are second in the nation behind Boston College in punt returns with an average of close to 25 yards per return, sparked by Tremaine Thompson. Averaging 29 yards per return coming into this game. He's thrown. He has returned 33 and 27. Here's Klein throwing incomplete. He's returned two punts, 33 yards and 27 yards so far. And, and that's the other cornerstone of this team, their incredible ability to play special teams. When you have good return teams, you win the battle of what we call hidden yardage. The yardage that you won't really see on the stat sheets. Instead of the ball coming out to the 20 because it goes in the end zone, you bring it out to the 35. I mean, to the 25, I should say. You bring it out to the 35, you had 10 yards. On a punt return, you get a couple extra first downs on a punt return. Help your field position, help your offense with shorter drives. Second down to 10 at the 42. Here's Klein. Over the middle, caught by Tremaine Thompson. And Thompson crosses midfield, close to a first down. And he's about a half yard short. Kenny Kane and Derek Kindred combining on the tackle. And when TCU gets the ball back on offense, their receivers need to take a page from Kansas State's guys. Because when the quarterback is inaccurate, your athleticism must increase as a receiver to catch the football. Kansas State's receivers do that for Colin Klein. Third down and short. Wildcats need a yard. They're 0 for their last five on conversion. Harper in motion. Here's a handoff. Huber. And second effort may have gotten it for him. Looks like it has. Now, what is this, the fourth time we've seen Kansas State? Yes. What do we normally see in that situation? Him spinning. Colin Klein sneaking, too. That's right. You know, normal, a lot of times, that's a sneak play for Colin Klein. He does it with patience sometimes. Sometimes he just burrows ahead. But that time, they elect to move the ball from off the line of scrimmage and let Hubert pick it up behind Braden, Braden Wilson, number 37, the fullback. So first down for Colin Klein at the TCU 47. And a timeout call by K-State. 11-17 to play third quarter. Kansas State 13, TCU nothing. Welcome back 13 to nothing and we've caught, this is our fourth K-State game this season. I don't know about you, Charles, but I haven't seen a defense compete with them like this TCU defense is doing tonight all season. They've really gummed up the works, for lack of a better term, because usually Kansas State finds a crack and is able to exploit it tonight. Colin Klein under constant pressure, trying to throw and run. Klein. Oh, and he's sacked again for the third time. Stansley Mapunga. This is an example of the front working with the back, meaning the coverage, excellent, which allows Mapunga, number 90, feeling better after the injured foot, beats two blockers. Tavon Rooks, the, the offensive tackle, Brandon Wilson, one of the better blocking fullbacks in the country, beats them around the corner and knocks down Colin Klein. But again, the coverage downfield, these guys, tremendous. Most sacks against K-State this season, three, second and 16. At the 47, Klein finds Hubert in the flats. Hubert spinning, juking, and Hubert finally taken down by Kenny Kane after two-yard gain. Even when you play zone defense, eventually it becomes man-to-man -man coverage. Look at this. See, Kevin, see, number 12, Kevin White was pointing and saying, hey, do I have help inside? But he stays with him. Even zone, you eventually get to where you're covering man on someone. It's kind of like a matchup zone in college basketball. Get there, snug up to the receiver, take away the pass. Third down and 14. Colin Klein out of the shotgun. Rolls out of the pocket, steps up now. Klein wants to throw it. Oh, what a pass and catch first down. Colin Klein, so patient, finally found Tyler Lockett for first down. On third and 14, they get 15. 
when Kansas State cuts their highlight reel for the year, cut this play out and put, on, put it under the heading, this is how you extend the life of a play. You talked about his patience. As we see Elijah Olabod on the ground for TCU getting attention. But how about him keeping his eyes downfield, knowing exactly where he was on the field, doesn't run out of real estate on the sideline, and finds a receiver downfield. Everything you talked about. Because right there, Mapunga's done a nice job. All right, he's got him, he thinks corralled in the pocket. He steps up inside and then exits out. Pump fake, pump fake. The third one, able to put it in there. Now watch Lockett in the middle, number 16. He sees his quarterback's in trouble. What's he trying to find? Open area. Dead grass, as many people call it. Presents and Klein delivers. First down and 10 at the TCU 36 for K-State. Klein to run it. Klein trying to get outside. Great open field tackle at the 35-yard line. This time, it's Jeff Hooker. And I don't know if you've talked about it yet, Charles, but TCU defensively, their formation is different from any of the other defenses that we've seen this year. They run the base, they run out of a base 4-2-5, and Gary Patterson has done that his whole career. What that means is four down linemen, two linebackers, five defensive backs. That's their base for just about everything. Sure, it'll change up occasionally, but those defensive backs allow you to get extra people into the box while still playing coverage in the secondary. In other words, heavy run teams, you'll face an extra defender or two closer to the line of scrimmage. Klein to throw it. No, now he takes off with run and run. Kyle Klein down the sideline. Touchdown, K-State. He does it again, 34 yards. And we talked about extra guys in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there, close to it. And this is why Colin Klein is called Optimus Klein and the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. He finds a gap, gets a nice block downfield from Tannehill, his tight end. And you don't think he's as fast as he is? Evidently, he has speed. Beats him to the pylon for the touchdown. 8.21 to go in the third. Kansas State extending their lead 20 to nothing. Colin Klein using his legs. And he hits Pater, his second touchdown tonight. Change. Kenyon Barner, we're still seeing him run, aren't we? Yes. I mean, when I when I close my eyes and think to myself, I'm not sure when he's been tackled. In the last game, we saw 321 yards and five touchdowns. That's right. As Colin Klein scores on the 34-yard run. 20 to nothing. K-State. And TCU will start from the 25. So let's show you what's going on in the BCS top 10. And there's been some moving and grooving, folks. Major shakeups here. Wait. Start I'm sorry, you see the yellow there, huh, partner? Yes. Alabama losing 29-24 to Texas A&M. Many people wondered about that game. Alabama, the emotional win over LSU, A&M playing at a high level. And then you go down to number nine, Louisville at Syracuse. Louisville had been behind, I believe, in six of their games this year. And people were wondering, could they continue to hold on? Doug Marone in Syracuse behind quarterback Ryan Nassib. A monster win. LSU up three on Mississippi State. And a lot of other games just getting underway or early in the action. First down and 10 of the 25. Boyk in the throw. Really puts something on this one. Nice throw and a great catch by Sky Dawson, who's back in. A 22-yard gain. And speaking of scores, let's go to EA. She's in the game. How about Mississippi State? Got off to that great 7-0 start and got whacked the last two weeks with Alabama and then Texas A&M. The previous play. Is under review. So they're taking LSU to the limit this evening. And I think the what they're looking at is whether or not Sky went 
down to his knee after he caught the ball. Dawson 11 running the route. Nice move inside. Catches the ball and knee with knee was down towards the turf. I'd have to see it really with stop action. Let's see how far down it goes. Yeah. See right there. I think they're going to bring it back to the point where he caught the football and his knee went down. But looking at the top 25, you have to really give a lot of credit to what's going on at Texas A&M this year. Remember last year when we had them, they would lead games and then relinquish the leads in the third and the fourth quarter. They were a top, top 10 team in preseason. I believe they lost four or five games last year, second half, fourth quarter, with leads, double-digit leads. And that ended up changing the complexion of their program. Mike Sherman let go as the head coach. Kevin Sumlin has come in and done an outstanding job. We can talk Johnny football all we want, and he's been amazing. Johnny Manziel, a quarter, Manziel, a quarterback, but someone's been terrific. After review, the runner's knee was down at the 42-yard line. First and 10 from the 42. And Gus, when you have a quarterback who hasn't been as accurate as you need, Sky Dawson treated that pass almost like a shortstop in baseball. Remember when we were kids and they taught us, don't let that ground ball pass you. Get down on one knee and block <laughs> it with your body. I felt like Sky Dawson was saying to his quarterback and to his team, I'm going to secure this catch first. Anything after that is gravy. So first down for TCU. Here's a handoff. Catalan. And Catalan crosses the 45. Childs brings him down. He picks up about five. And they threw the ball downfield to Sky Dawson. I feel like that it would be up an opportunity now again for TCU to think about pushing the ball downfield while there's still real estate. Because once you get towards red zone and Kansas State tightens up and you don't have as much room to operate, much more difficult to fit passes in to smaller windows. Second down and five at the 47. Boykin in trouble, and Boykin wrapped up, flag on the play, but it's Childs once again getting into the backfield. And they never even looked at the play fake. I mean, they just made a beeline for the quarterback. Illegal shot block, number 23. The penalties declined, third down. That's B.J. Catalan. So Catalan's the running back, but watch Childs, 26, bottom of your screen. So there's the chop, and the reason because the, the offensive player was engaged at the time by, a deep, by an offensive lineman, excuse me, a defensive player by an offensive lineman, so the second guy can't chop him down low. But Childs never respected the play fake and went right to the quarterback. A loss of 18 yards, third down and 23. Boykin, and he sacked again, loses the ball, Kansas State, and TCU somehow manages to hold on, Adam Davis punched it out, Davion Collins recovered for TCU, they are dangerous enough when it's all even, meaning first and ten, second and five, but you give them the full advantage, third and 18, and off they go to the races, meet at the quarterback. Ryan Mueller tried to scoop it and score. Horn Frogs running out of their own end zone, and Ethan Perry off the side of his foot. And Kansas State will have the ball at the 18. And that freshman, Ethan Perry, came into this game averaging 45 and 45.9 yards per punt and they were talking about his poise and with a big foot he had and in a tough situation here one gets away from him and really backs up what has to be now I think a little bit of a tired defense for TCU they've been on the field a lot tonight Ethan Perry seventh in the nation and second in the Big 12 averaging close to 46 yards per punt he got eight on that last attempt First down and 10 of the 18. 
Ortiz. Remember what Gary Patterson told us in our meeting about what you need to do to make it a game with Kansas State? You need to keep it within seven going into the fourth quarter. Because otherwise, what do they do? They slow death you. Take care of the football, run it, bleed out the clock, play physical with you. Right now, obviously, Kansas State, Tech TCU down 20. Kansas State with the ball in scoring territory. Second and six. Klein gives it to Pease around the corner this time. And he's tackled at the 10-yard line. Kenny Kane. For the amount of plays TCU's defense, I believe, has had to be on the field tonight, they've done yeoman's work. This score is not indicative to me of the work TCU has done all evening on the defensive side of the ball. It's hard to hold in there constantly when the field position goes against you. Third down and two at the 10. This is usually where Colin Klein elects to run the football. Klein to throw it in the end zone. Incomplete. On third down and short, he went for Tremaine Thompson. But Kevin White was there defensively. And Tremaine Thompson turned into a defensive back here. See how he made the play through Kevin White to make sure White could not intercept the football and keep the opportunity available for Kansas State to attempt a field goal. A good sound fundamental play that doesn't show up in the stats, but it'll be appreciated by the coaching staff. And Telly, two of three, missed a 48-yarder. This from 27 yards away, and it's good. 23 zip, Kansas State leading here in Fort Worth, Texas. Back after this. Saints don't want a piece of the Falcons in this one and try and end their perfect season. That rivalry is one of the hotter rivalries in the NFL that maybe a lot of people don't realize. A lot of fans go back and forth for that game. Hop on that quick shuttle down to New Orleans or up to Atlanta. It's a big one. Smitty's got him going, though, in Atlanta. Does he ever? Wow. And Matty Ice. Someone's talking about he needs a new nickname. No. I think that nickname's apropos, and he's playing at that level. And all the Falcons are looking forward to now. Obviously, they'll never tell you this. They got to get to the playoffs and win some games and get that last monkey off their back. This time it'll be Brandon Carter. And he lets it go out of the end zone. So let's take a look at the title game chase and the strength of schedule. For Alabama, they have to figure out how far they're going to fall and see if they still have a chance to get back in this with some help now. Kansas State leading big here, as we know. Oregon goes to Cal tonight. They'll play that a little bit later. And Notre Dame ahead of Boston College 7-3. Notre Dame doesn't win any style points the way that they play all right they're going to win the game and get out of there but they may not win the game where you go wow Oregon is a wow team Kansas State tonight they they know what the deal is their goal is to finish this thing in style and give the voters something to think about here's Carter with the grab gets across the 30 now you're a voter how far does Alabama fall I think that after the night is over and we find out where the unbeatens are they fall in the first slot after everyone who's still unbeaten. I don't think they fall any farther than that. So in other words, if Notre Dame wins, if Oregon wins, if Kansas State's able to close this out, to me they fall to four. They'll be the top of the unbe top of the once beaten teams. I don't believe Georgia gets a chance to jump Alabama. I think most people will look at it and still think that Alabama is better than Georgia until proven different. Tucker to the 38. Childs again with the tackle. You know, Bama get the benefit of being a champion last year, being a team that's been the top of the heap all year long. They won't fall very far, but they won't get that one. Remember the year Florida State lost at Notre Dame in the game of the century and only fell to two? That's not going to happen. They'll fall farther than that. So first down for TCU at their own 39. Tucker breaks it back, lowers his shoulder, and 
Tucker gets all the way up to the 43. Ty Zimmerman with the tackle as he throws himself under the chariot. Zimmerman has to be helped up. Former quarterback himself, they can ill afford to lose Ty Zimmerman for any length of time because he coordinates everything in the secondary. Physical in the run game as a tackler, a real ball hawk in the secondary. Picked up his fifth interception today. Take another look. Watch him appear in the picture in the run game. He shows up. Arthur Brown misses. And there's Zimmerman in good position. Strikes through. The way they were looking at him when he first came out, I wonder if it's a leg injury. The way that it slid, the way his legs got splayed out a little bit, and maybe he wasn't able to get a solid base. Zimmerman, all Big 12 in his first two seasons. He's a junior. They started 34 straight games. 10 career interceptions. And there's something you'd like to see, too. Head coach out there checking on his player. Uh, you see that the jacket Coach Snyder's wearing? Yes. It's from the Cotton Bowl last year. There's got to be a story there about why he wants to wear that jacket that he will never share with us. But I have a feeling, Gus, you know what I think it is? What is it? I think it's motivation. They lost the Cotton Bowl game to Arkansas. I think he wears that thing, just kind of a subliminal message to his guys that we didn't finish the deal we wait the way we wanted to last year. Just a guess. Just a guess. Because he's not going to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> he sure won't. He's not telling us. But although we were really happy this week, folks, we've told the story before about how normally on the conference call on Wednesday with Coach Snyder, we get seven minutes. Well, our producer and director had a clock on it this week, and we actually got nine. That's improvement. Are we making progress? We're making progress. <laughs> I, like, I like it, though, because you know one thing when you get with Coach Snyder, there's no nonsense. You ask your questions, he gives you your answers, and everybody moves on with their day. Third down and four at the 45. Ball start, offense, number 69, five-yard penalty, third down. It's Avion Collins. True freshman, right tackle, the first true freshman to start on offense under Gary Patterson as head coach at TCU, so you know he's talented. Now, how much have I been advocating as we look at the number of youngsters who have played 16 true freshmen, 20 guys have made their first career start this year, so this team is very young with a chance to grow and continue to improve. How many times tonight have I advocated throwing the ball downfield? Well, it's hard to throw it downfield when you're getting penalties and you can't pass protect. Boykin on third and nine for the sideline. Caught. Great grab by Josh Boyce. And he got in front of the marker and picks up the first down. So on third and nine, they get ten. And a good understanding in his route running, Josh Boyce 82, of, of what you described. Understanding where the first down marker was. To catch it on forward progress, gets the spot, first down. TCU at midfield now. 30th straight game with the catch for Josh Boyce. Boykin in trouble. And Boykin taken down. It's Latui. Vi Latui and Adam Davis combining. And go back and high five the secondary because they helped make this possible. Malone 24 wrapped up. Milo 23 covering Dawson. Underneath coverage knocking him off the route is Evans 15. Chapman three, the National Defensive Player of the Week last week with three intercepts Oklahoma State. And they bought the time for Adam Davis to chase him to Vi Latui for the sack. Third sack of the evening for Kansas State. Make that the fourth sack, a loss of five. And Boykin hit as he throws the ball. Incomplete pass, and he got drilled. Meshack Williams was in the backfield. And Tom Hayes' defense, the D coordinator for Kansas State, we don't talk about him much, but he has these guys playing and know what they're doing. They've read the scoreboard. It's 23 to nothing. So play fakes mean nothing to them. In other words, I'm not worried about it. If you hand the ball inside, so be it. But if you don't, I'm coming right to you because you're down 23 points. You need to throw the ball. Tom Hayes, we don't hear his voice. You don't see him get any credit. 
but he has coordinated a defense that's one of the better ones in the country this year, and they are playing at a super high level for him. Third down and 15. They hand it off to Tucker. And Matthew Tucker gets to the 44-yard line. As Thomas Ferguson and Justin Tumble brings him down, and it looks like TCU thinking about going for it here on fourth and four after the 11-yard game. I don't think they have a choice with the score being what it is. The key will be whether they go for it now or wait for the quarter break and do it on fourth and four going in the opposite direction. It looks like they're going to wait it out. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Kansas State 23, TCU nothing. Fox College Football will be back after these messages from your local Fox station. Welcome back to Fort Worth as we take a look at the scoring by quarters. Kansas State up 10 zip in the first. They tacked on three in the second. Scored 10 in the third. TCU ready to punt it away. They elect to not go for it on fourth down and four. Tyler Lockett, Tremaine Thompson. Back deep. This one into the end zone by Ethan Perry. One thing about Kansas State. Colin Klein and Bill Snyder have a terrific relationship and in the past when the coach and the quarterback get along good things happen and I think about coaches who are also play callers in the relationship Vince Lombardi and Bart Starr a dynasty how about Drew Brees and Sean Payton often talked about when Payton's the head coach of the Saints there's no better play calling combination in the league and Bill Snyder and Colin Klein and, and Colin Klein has bought in so well to Bill Snyder that his nickname around Manhattan, Kansas, is Little Bill. That if Bill Snyder says it, Colin Klein will echo it and believe it. Here's Hubert down the sideline with the running room. And John Hubert delivering a blow at the end of the play as he gets to the 40. And this is before the game. Coach Snyder and his quarterback having a conversation. You talk to the beat writers that cover Kansas State, and they say, if you do a press conference with Bill Snyder, and then Colin Klein comes in after you've essentially going to hear the exact same thing said because they are so entwined with each other and so in tune in concert totally bought in to the Bill Snyder way as Colin Klein there's down to 10 at the 34 and Hubert looking for running room and he has it Ola Bode with the tackle and Gus, over time, I've kind of polled guys who played quarterback for Bill Snyder and just asked the simple question, what makes a Bill Snyder quarterback? And this is what I boiled it down to after their answers. A guy who has attention to detail, a player who has toughness, and a player who has a desire and will to win. You think that epi thing number seven epitomizes all of those? He certainly does. Second and six. Klein drops back to throw it. Going for the long ball. Lock it. Incomplete. Broken up at the last minute by Kevin White. One thing you know about a TCU defense is that the effort will never wane. Lockett has a step behind the secondary. And Kevin White catches up, plays the ball, and knocks away what would have been a touchdown to Tyler Lockett. Brings up third down and six at the 38. Empty backfield for Colin Klein. A Klein deflected and incomplete. Sam Carter almost had an interception. Great individual effort, and yeah, Kansas State will have to punt it away. Who got their hand on it initially? Was that Mapunga? I Number thought 90? it was Carter. Or was it Carter who got it? Good job, nonetheless, 
TCU continuing to fight, getting off the field on third down. So Dorr will punt it from the 23. Sky Dawson back deep, and another sensational punt by Dorr. And it's fair caught at the 22, a 40-yard punt. 13-17 to play. It's been a tough night for, for Trevon Boykin. Let's see if he can find a rhythm when we come back. 23-0, Kansas State leading TCU here in the fourth quarter. Gus Johnson, Charles Davis, Julie Alexandria with you. First down and 10 for the Horned Frogs at the 23. They hand it off, Catalan around the corner. And Alan Chapman is there. Let's go to Los Angeles for a game break with Aaron Andrews. And thank you, Aaron. 13-12 to go here in the fourth. TCU being shut out. Boykin to the sideline. Picked. Oh! Nigel Malone. He had a touchdown in front of him, and he just couldn't hold on. <laughs> and now he's doing the push-ups <laughs> that are often done as punishment for dropped interceptions in practice. Because he knew... He catches it, he's gone. Cam White might have gotten a little bit of a hand in there, the, the intended receiver to help force the incompletion. But Nigel Malone would have loved to have taken that. And there you go, the self-punishment that most defensive players go through when they drop an interception in practice around the country. Third down and five of the 28. Boykin. Underneath as his receiver. And this is Ladarius Brown, and a first down for Ladarius Brown. Nigel Malone, Randall Evans combining on the tackle. TCU, it's been a long time since they've been shut out. 1991, the last time they were shut out. And the last time they were shut out at home was in 1985 to Arkansas. 41 zip. And that's 251 straight games that encompasses coming into this evening. First down at the 37. Boykin wants to run. And Boykin taken down at the 42, a five-yard gain. Randall Evans, Adam Davis. TCU will have a bye next week. And then on the 22nd, they'll be at Texas. And they'll wrap up their season at home against Oklahoma. Second down and five of the 42. Empty backfield for Boykin. To the sideline, nice throw. This time it's Catalan, the running back. He's close to a first down. Looks like he has it. Alan Chapman on the coverage, but after getting three interceptions a week ago, just getting the tackle on a, on a pass completion isn't good enough for him anymore. Alan Chapman and Nigel Malone, the other corner, came to Kansas State together from City College of San Francisco's junior college transfers. Nigel Malone was an All-American last year, second team. Alan Chapman trying to get to that status this year. We go to Chapman's side once again. This time it's Josh Boyce, but Alan, Alan Chapman, as you mentioned, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week after intercepting three passes. Returned one of them for 29 yards and a touchdown. Had five tackles, two breakups as well. Take a look at the transfer guys coming in, whether it's transferring from another school, junior college transfers, and look at how it's worked out. Every guy that's named on that list, a prominent player with a key role on the 2012 Kansas State roster. Here's a handoff to Catalan. Catalan spinning at the sideline and steps out of bounds at the 22. A 26-yard gain for BJ. 
That's significant because how often do you get a big play of 20 yards or more against Kansas State? Love the effort of Catalan. Well blocked to begin with. And how about the vision to see the hole to the right? Slips the tackle by Childs, 23, and gets all he can out of the run down the sideline. That's just the third 20-yard run against Kansas State's defense all season long. That's pretty impressive. And he gains 26. First down and 10 of the 22. Boykin finds his tight end, and that's Griffin Gilbert. He gets out of bounds. Gilbert has been a sure-handed receiver this evening. And this is their first red zone possession tonight. And according to my stats coming into the game, I didn't have Griffin Gilbert for a catch. Now, I, I, I could be wrong. But I feel like tonight, we're, tonight's the night he had his first catches of the season. And this is where Trevon Boykin will get tested as a thrower if they elect to the throw down here. Inside the red zone, the throwing lanes really get condensed. How accurate are you going to be throwing the ball in this situation? Here's Boykin. Breaks contained. Boykin sidestepping and goes down at the 12. To a hard four yards for the redshirt freshman. Randall Evans bringing him to the turf. He picks up a first down for TCU, but look at what you have to battle in the red zone. Only 14 touchdowns allowed. They've taken it away four times. And three turnovers on downs forced. So this is the growth of a young quarterback. Here's another opportunity. First down and 10 of the 12. And they hand it off to Tucker. Tucker will pick up two. Ryan Mueller defensively for K-State. I want to ask you a question, Charles. The word transfer, for some critics, it has a negative connotation. Yeah, and, and, it, and it usually involves junior college transfers. But if you go back through the years and you look at Kansas State and the number that they've taken, not just that they're good football players, but look at how many have gotten their degrees and gone on and done exactly what they were supposed to do in college. It's not negative in Manhattan, I can tell you that. Boykin. And Boykin finally taken down. Great individual effort by Adam Davis to tackle the shifty quarterback in space. Their ability to run to the football. Arthur Brown forces the play, and he misses, which doesn't happen often. But look at how Kansas State closes and converges. Look at the number of guys in the picture at the end of the play wearing white jerseys. I counted five at the end of that play, all converging on the quarterback, trying to make a play downfield. Third down and 10 of the 12. Arthur Brown in the middle. Boykin. And he'll be tackled for a loss. They call him down at the 19. Meshack Williams again. Sixth sack of the night for K-State. Difficult, difficult, difficult when the field shrinks. Receivers don't have as many places to go. So if you don't get the ball out of your hands quickly to a quick breaking route and you allow Kansas State's rush to impose its will, that's the end result. Gary Pageant trying to get something on the board to be positive. Overcrome comes in to attempt a 35-yarder. And they're finally on the board. So we will not have a shutout tonight here at Fort Worth. Under seven minutes to play, 23-3. He can do it all. And A.J. McCarron quietly was the number one court, was the starting quarterback for the number one team in the country and playing at a high level. Two interceptions tonight, his first two of the season. Alabama loses. That will really affect his Heisman rating. You notice who's not on there. Braxton Miller from Ohio State. Number of other guys we could talk about. TCU to send it away. Tyler Lockett, the deep man. And this one out of the end zone. So coming up, Colin Klein with 6.59 remaining will have the football at his own 25. Our score with 6 minutes and 59 seconds remaining.
K-State with a 23-3 lead over TCU. The Wildcats, the number two team in the nation, and they may be on their way to becoming the number one team in the nation if they can hold on here against TCU with Alabama losing this afternoon. And let's take a look at our Reese's perfect play. Colin Klein, 34 yards. And that was against a defense that had eight men close to the line of scrimmage in a position to keep an eye on the number one playmaker for Kansas State's offense. And with some help from his friends, he found a way to the end zone. 181 of Kansas State's 244 yards before this drive started. Colin Klein had a hand in that and scored both of the team's touchdowns. Klein handing off to Hubert. And Hubert, no gain on the play. Olaboat with the tackle. Colin Klein, another interesting stat. He now has 52 career rushing touchdowns. And for a quarterback, that's fourth most behind Eric Crouch, who has 59, Colin Kaepernick, who had 58, and T Tim Tebow, who had 57. So there's still a chance for him to lead with the all-time record. Colin Kaepernick, who I call the transformer when he was at Nevada. And now, <laughs> here comes Optimus Klein coming at him from Manhattan, Kansas. Third down at eight. And Klein delivers underneath. And they will be short of the first down. Tremaine Thompson with the grab in front of Kenny Kane. And here comes the punt team. So, Charles, the next two games in five minutes, maybe the biggest moments in the history of Kansas State football. And they will be looking at them playing the game. And the hard part is the rest of the fans, because I think Bill Snyder keeps his team pretty well focused. The games are the ones that matter for his kids. But the fans and the administration scoreboard watching and trying to guess what the computers are going to say each and every week. Because they'll be locked in a race now with Oregon if they win tonight. And Notre Dame, who is winning so far at Boston College. Next week, Kansas State at Baylor. They'll have a bye and then face Texas. This man, though, he continues to coach his guys up. Gary Patterson. Only on Fox. Did you see that reaction by Howie Long when you, can they save their season? He was throwing his hands <laughs> by his head. Here's Boykin to throw it. And broken up. Good coverage by Nigel Malone. The All-America. See, going forward, when I watch his Kansas State team, who do they have next? Because Baylor gets the opportunity? Yes. Can you pass protect long enough to push routes deeper against the secondary? Because they sit on your break points in routes where they think you're going to break off routes and jump your routes. You've got to push them deeper to get them away from that confidence that they can just take away everything underneath. Teams who play them, that's an opportunity they've got to check out. Wake sailing that one high. If I were a Kansas State fan going into the last three weeks of this season, I would be so scared and nervous. I don't even know if I could watch the games. There's so much on the line. They've been there before. They went 11-0 in 1998, had to play the Big 12 championship game against Texas A&M and got beaten double overtime. Otherwise, they're in the national championship game. They're trying to get back from that opportunity again. The good thing is how Coach Schneider has them approach each and every week. If they can stay with that, they've got a terrific opportunity to realize their dreams. Third down and 10 at the 34. Boykin throwing on the run across his body, has Josh Boyce. And Boyce, nice piece of running, and he gets to the 39. After 27-yard game, Thomas Ferguson with the tackle. About the move in and out of the pocket by the, the freshman quarterback Trevon Boykin to buy the time and then was able to sling it back inside to a bo to Boyce to create a big play. Boyce lips off the field. First down at the Kansas State 39 yard line. Boykin. Okay, and incomplete. And 
And when I talked about that opportunity you would have with Kansas State sling, pu pushing the ball downfield, you notice I didn't say anything about how successful you would be. It's just you have to find a way to get them off of your underneath coverage because they smother it after a while. If you can't get them backed up on their heels a little bit, if they're just playing the game coming forward, just like a boxer on his toes, advancing and throwing the blows, if you can't get them retreating at all, you have no chance with Kansas State. Second down and 10 at the 39. Boykin near side. And caught by Josh Boyce. And Josh Boyce is coming off a tremendous game last week against West Virginia. He's the Big 12 of Offensive Player of the Week after recording six catches for a career high 180 yards and two touchdowns. Had a 94 yard touchdown as well. They helped, they helped put them into overtime. We had all three players of the week in the Big 12 in our game tonight. Third down, incomplete. Intended for Josh Boyce. You mentioned Boyce. He was the offensive player of the week. Alan Chapman, you mentioned him earlier. The second, the cornerback for Kansas State. The defensive player of the week. And Tyler Lockett was the special teams player of the week with a kickoff return for a touchdown. So TCU looks like they'll go for it on fourth down and four at the K-State 33. And some movement on the right side of the offensive line. Ball start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And I think that that was created by Arthur Brown, the linebacker, who kind of late, all of a sudden, rushed towards the line of scrimmage. And I think that Eric Tausch, number 73, saw him, and that put him in retreat. Penalties, four for 25 yards. And look at K-State, only one penalty the entire night for five yards. And that's Tavon Brooks, the offensive lineman. I'm sure he'll get a little extra attention for that in film work this week. Here's Boykin. In trouble. Wants to run it. Still on his feet. And low as he dropped at the 32. Wow. Jarrell Childs, we've called his name a bunch this evening. So great coverage yet again by K-State. Look out, a matched up. Arthur Brown running from inside out, number four. Randall Evans, 15. Childs, 26 underneath. Milo, 23 deep. Malone, 24. And then look at Childs rally to the football and make the tackle. Jarrell Childs was a running back for two years at Kansas State before becoming a linebacker. He'd been backing up this season. And then Trey Walker got hurt, and he's moved into the starting lineup. First down at the 31 for Kansas State. Here's the option. Klein keeps it and goes down. Kenny Kane on the bottom of the pile to, along with Sam Carter. Don't forget coming up after the game. Stay tuned for the AT&T Fox College Saturday postgame show. They'll cover all of today's action, including the big upset. Alabama and Texas A&M. Second down and 12. Here's the option again. Klein pitching it to Pease. And Pease will hurdle forward and cross the 35 up to the 37. Gains about seven. And speaking of Alabama, Nick Saban was really honest this week in some of his uh, meetings with the press. He said that the Texas A&M offense really worried him about considering how many points they can score as Lockett goes down. It's the second player we've seen with an ankle injury tonight. Ty Zimmerman, their starting safety, and now Tyler Lockett, one of their better receivers and kick returners. To defend their title, and there goes Tyler Lockett. And that's another injury that if you're a Kansas State fan, you're hoping that it's a minor injury because that's another key player that's limped off tonight. Ty Zimmerman, the starting free safety, did that earlier this evening. Third down and five. Under two minutes to play. Colin Klein. On third and five. Picks up the first down. Tremaine Thompson with the grab. 
here's the injury to lock it. 16, he's blocking, doing what they ask you to do. And he ends up getting whiplash a little bit there by Marcus Mallett. A little leg whip coming through. Unintentional, of course. Mallett trying to make a play, but rolls into Tyler Lockett. And right now, you think to yourself, if you're a Kansas State fan, Colin Klein, how about that seat on the bench with a, with a baseball cap right now? <laughs> Rest of the season to go. I don't want to see him out there. Hands the football up. Off the keys, he fumbles, and it's recovered by TCU. Mapunga with the fumble recovery. And with 1.11 to go, TCU will take over inside Kansas State territory. Watch the middle of the play. Mallet 54 comes from the left side and almost a perfect form tackle. Helmet on the football and knocks it free. And Mapunga with hustle wraps up the football and gives TCU another opportunity down the stretch to put points on the board. Two turnovers tonight for Kansas State after only four and nine games. Boykin in trouble, gets it away. Catalan out of bounds. Minute and five remaining. Second down and long, Boykin to throw. Has his man, that's Dawson, out of bounds, stops the clock. Sky Dawson. Gains 19 on the play. It's a pretty throw, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Off the break, puts it right on his receiver. Well done. Boykin again. This time he has Carter. Turns it up, Carter close to the end zone. Touchdown, TCU. And what you appreciate, I believe, most on this play is the effort. This is Brandon Carter not playing, looking at the scoreboard. This is Brandon Carter playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. All out until the clock's hit zero. Kansas State gives up their first points off turnovers of the season. Extra point good. 23 to 10 with 47 seconds left. And don't forget, folks, next week, Fox College Saturday begins with a Pac-12 showdown as either 19th ranked USC. And after the touchdown score, Bill Snyder was not a happy man. See, he's unhappy because of what broke down and the defense got scored on and the whole deal because he's seeking that perfection. But you know what else happens here? If people who are voting can't see the game or didn't see the game, you're just seeing a final score. This doesn't resonate the way that Kansas State wants it to resonate. You know, you're going to see a final score now if it still holds this at 23 to 10, which is no indication of how this game has gone all evening for Kansas State. It looks closer than what it was. Coach Patterson with the onside kick. Takes a bounce, and the ball recovered by Chris Harper. And, you know, furthering your point, let's take a look at how the voting broke down last week in the BCS. Well, Alabama ones all across the boards. We know that will change this week. Kansas State three. Now, this is the human poll. All right, this is not the, the computer aspect. Oh, excuse me, the computer and the computer is the first row. All right, and see, and that's where Oregon has been stung at five. Kansas State, that's what gives them the advantage. Threes across the board. The five hurt Oregon. And now we're going to find out where the human votes will go with Alabama now getting beat. Do a lot of them go to Kansas State and elevate them? Do people ship them or continue to move them to Oregon? Because remember, the humans, if I'm not mistaken, two-thirds of the final poll. And that will do it as both teams come onto the field. Kansas State remains undefeated, 10-0 
overall. 7-0 in the Big 12. TCU falling to 6-4, 3-4 in conference play. As the two gentlemen shake hands after this match. The final score here in Fort Worth, 23 to 10, K-State keeps it going. Now let's take you to Aaron Andrews in our Fox studio for the AT&T Fox 